Hi there, welcome to the final episode of our series on mathematical language and symbols. In this presentation, we will be talking about truth values and truth tables. But before we continue, do not forget to like this video, hit the subscription and notification bell to stay updated of future videos. Let us start with the truth values of our first compound proposition, conjunction, given any two propositions, P and Q. So P and Q here are uh, simple propositions. We're going to assign the number 1 if the proposition P and Q are true and 0 if they are false. Uh, by the way, these numbers that we see here are the number of possible combinations of the truth value of P and Q. So since we have two simple propositions, there are four possible combinations of the truth values of P and Q. Either both of them are true, both of them are false, or one of them is true, the other is false. Of course, if we add another simple proposition, so there is a third proposition, then we do not have only four possible combinations of their truth values. If we add a third simple proposition here, say R, then there would be eight, not just four, but eight possible combinations of their truth values. If there are four, instead of only two, we have four simple propositions instead, then we would have 16 possible combinations of their truth values. Actually, the formula is 2 raised to n, where n is the number of simple propositions. 2 raised to 2, since there are 2 propositions here, there are 4 possible combinations. If there are 3, that is 2 raised to 3, we have 8. If there are 4, we have 2 raised to 4, there are 16 propositions. But let us start with a simple example. If we have 2 propositions, if we have 2 simple propositions, what are the truth values of the conjunction P and Q? Now, let's take a look at these values. The conjunction P and Q is only true if both of the conjuncts or both of the simple propositions that we have here are also true on any other combination of the truth values of P and Q. This means that if one of them or both of them are false, then the entire conjunction becomes true. False. So remember this one, a conjunction is only true if both of the simple propositions are also true. How about for a disjunction? The disjunction is only false. We see that it's only zero in the last row. That happens if both of the disjuncts are also false. For a disjunction, it is true if both of them or one of them is true. It's actually the reverse of the conjunction. A conjunction is true if both are true, but a disjunction is false if both are false. Here are the truth values of an implication. An implication is only false. We see that it has only zero in the second row. And what happens there? That is if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. In any other instances, it's always true. Again, it is always false if the hypothesis is true but the conclusion is false. How about a biconditional? A biconditional is true if the two simple propositions here have the same truth values, meaning if both of them are true or both of them are false. Otherwise, if they have different truth values, we have one zero here, zero one, then the biconditional is false. One application of our truth values and truth table is to identify the nature of our compound proposition. When we say nature, we are referring to whether a compound proposition is a tautology. It is a tautology if the compound proposition is always true. It is a contradiction if it's always false and it is a contingency if the truth values is a mixture of true and false. Let's provide an example. Here is the compound proposition and our goal here is to identify whether this is a tautology, a contradiction, or a contingency. 
Now, the first thing that we do here is to, since this is a complex proposition, we're going to break it down into simpler propositions. For example, let us break them down into the following simpler uh, propositions so that identifying their truth values could be easier. We have a different column for not n, not s, and then we have s and not s, and then we have this part of the proposition, and then finally we have the given proposition. The next step is to identify how many simple propositions is involved in our compound proposition. We have two simple propositions, proposition n and proposition S, so that there should be four possible combinations of the truth values of our simple propositions because we only have two. For the first column, we are going to identify the truth values of not n, that is the negation of the proposition n. So we are just going to reverse the truth value. If it's true, then it becomes false, or if it's false, the negation is true. We are negating n so that the truth values should be 0, 0, 1, 1. n is 1, 1, 0, 0, so its negation is 0, 0, 1, 1. Also, the negation of s is 0, 1, 0, 1. We are negating this column here. For the next column, it is a conjunction of, of which column? We have this column and this column. Again, if we recall the truth values of a conjunction, a conjunction is only true if both of the simple propositions are true. And if we look at these two columns here, there is no instance that the two propositions here are true. That means that our conjunction is always false. So it's always zero. Because again, there is no instance that the two propositions are true. Our next column is an implication. The hypothesis is N. There we have it. And our conclusion is the conjunction S and not S. So we are comparing the truth values of these columns. We recall again that for an implication, it is only false if the hypothesis is true, but the corresponding conclusion is zero. And we see that that happens in our first and second row. So the truth value for this one is zero. It's true for the rest of the rows. All right, we are now ready to identify the truth values, the general truth values of the proposition given here. The proposition is again an implication whose hypothesis is this entire proposition here, which we identified earlier. This one, these are the truth values. And the conclusion is not n. That's the negation of n. So we are comparing these two columns here. However, this is an implication starting from this column going to this column. Again, an implication is only false if our hypothesis is true but the corresponding conclusion is false. Is there an instance that our hypothesis is true but the conclusion is false? So we have a true hypothesis here but the conclusion is still true so that is true again our hypothesis is true here but the conclusion is true this means that the truth values of this compound proposition is always true because it is always true then we call this compound proposition a tautology another example we have this proposition if we break it down we have a implies r this part and then we have the negation of this part and then already our given proposition. How many simple propositions is involved in our compound proposition? We only have A and R. So we're going to prepare four rows. These combinations here already exhaust all the possible truth value combinations of our simple propositions. We start with this one. What are the truth values for this column? This is an implication from A to R. We are looking for a 1-0 format. That's because for an implication, that's the only case, it becomes false. And that happens here. So it should be 0 here. And then the negation of this column. Negation is very simple. We just reverse the operation. We just change 1 to 0 and 0 to 1. Our final column is a conjunction. The first conjunct is R, this column, and the second conjunct, this entire negation, 
for which we already identified its truth values. So again, if it is a conjunction, that is true if both of the conjuncts are true. We are comparing these two columns here. We are looking for uh, instances where both of them are true. Does it happen? We have 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. There is no instance that uh, our conjuncts are both true. That means that this conjunction is always false. Because it's always false, we call that compound proposition a contradiction. Let's have another example. We have this compound proposition and if we look carefully, it is comprised of one, two, three simple propositions. We have P, Q, and R. Breaking it into simpler propositions, we have this one. But if we're going to prepare the combinations of the truth values of the three simple propositions here, then it would be more than four. In fact, there should be eight possible combinations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these are the possible combinations. What are the truth values of not P? So based from this column, we are going to negate. We have 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 1s. Just the negation of this column. How about Q and R? Q and R, it is an implication. It is true if the first is true, but the second is false. Meaning the hypothesis is true, but the conclusion is false. Where does that happen? It happens here in the second row and the third row. Anywhere else, we should put 1. And finally, we have here still an implication. This is the main operator. Our hypothesis is not P, so this column here. And then our conclusion is another implication Q implies R. We are looking for instances where not P is 1 and Q implies R is 0. Do we have a situation for that? I guess so. This one. So that's 0. Anywhere else should be 1. Since the truth values of our compound proposition here is a mixture of one and zeros, meaning a mixture of true and false, then this is a contingency. Another example, it's still a compound proposition comprised of three uh, simple propositions. So this should be our uh, basis. This exhausts all the possibilities or the truth values of the three propositions P, Q, and R. We're going to identify first the truth values of P or R before we identify for the entire proposition. P or R, that is a disjunction. A disjunction is only false if both of them are false. So we look for a situation, an instance that the two are false. Do we have that instance? Yes, we have it here. Zero and then zero. We also have it here in the last one. In the last row, zero and then zero. So, these are the only instances where P or R is false. Anywhere else is true. Finally, we are to identify the truth values of the given compound proposition. This is an implication whose hypothesis is Q and whose conclusion is P or R. We are looking for a 1, 0 format. That's 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. There you have it. So, 1, 0 in an implication that should be zero and anywhere else should be true. So these are the truth values of the compound proposition here. Of course, this is still a contingency because this is a mixture of ones and zeros. The last topic that we're going to discuss is all about equivalence. Two compound propositions are equivalent if they have exactly the same truth values. So we're going to prepare their truth tables and then compare. If it's the same, then the two compound propositions are referred to be equivalent. Let us go back to the last two compound propositions that we presented, this proposition and this one. And if we notice, they have exactly the same truth values for the same combinations of the simple propositions used in these propositions. Because of this, we call the two compound propositions equivalent. If there is a single mismatch in our uh, truth tables, then that's enough to say that the two propositions are not equivalent. This concludes our series on mathematical language and symbols. Thank you for listening.